Hello everybody, welcome back to another SUP Border video. My name is Ruben and I'm going to talk you through the Nautical Eye Rocker and Blackfin Paddleboard ranges. Now a lot of you out there are looking at these boards for 2020. We're getting a lot of questions on SUP Border and a lot of them are around really trying to understand what board is best for you. Now obviously they all come on different price points, different constructions and with different features and fittings. And in this video we're going to talk over which board will be best for you and really trying to highlight the differences between all of these boards. Now the brand iRocker which is behind all of these brand names of boards is based in the US in Florida but now they are very much available all around the world so they are generating a lot more interest in 2020 and as I said before we're getting a lot more questions on SUP Border about these brands. In this video we're going to break it down into a few simple sections to hopefully help you understand which board is right for you. First off we're going to look at all of the boards in the ranges looking at the specifications and the sizes then we're going to be looking at the constructions the weights and we're also going to be going over the deflection test which is how bendy or how stiff these boards are then you can relate them all to the weights and the constructions and understand really why they are the price point they are and hopefully give you a better idea on which product will be best for you. So under the iRocker brand, you have the Nautical, you have iRocker, and you have Black Fin. You have one board available in the Nautical, you have four boards available in the iRocker range, and you have three boards available in the Black Fin range. The sizes of those boards, the Nautical board is a 10.6 by 32, so your general all-round first time entry level, and an ideal shape to get lots of people into paddling for the first time. Moving up from there you have the iRocker 10 foot which is still very much an all round base paddleboard, 10 foot long, 32 inches wide, 6 inches thick, so very similar to the nautical board. Slightly bigger board you have an iRocker 10.6 cruise and that's 10.6 long, 33 wide, so a little bit wider than the smaller 10 foot one. Then you have the iRocker 11 foot sport, 11 foot long, 31 wide, 6 inches thick. Your biggest board in the iRocker is the 11 foot, it's still an all round shape, 11 foot long, 32 wide, 6 inches thick. Then if we move on to the Blackfin range, the smallest board in their range is the 10.6, it's 35 inches wide, it's still 6 inches thick like all of the other boards we spoke about already. The Blackfin model XL is the next size up, 11.6 long, 34 inches wide. And the last and longest board is the Blackfish model V which is 12.6 by 32. So before we move on to talking about the constructions of the three types of boards, the so Nautical, the iRocker and the Blackfin, let's have a quick look at the sizes and really what they're trying to aim at by looking at those three ranges of boards. So the Nautical 10.6 by 32, it is your pretty much bog standard get into paddleboarding for the first time. So many people go for this size paddleboard to get into the sport. You can do so much with this size paddleboard. You can go flat water cruising, a bit of light touring, surfing, paddle with the kids with it. You can do so much with these types of boards. So 10.6 by 32 is your magic width and length for most people getting into paddleboarding. And that's why they've kept that one board at that price point. So the Nautical is the cheaper price point entry level paddleboard. Looking at the iRocker range, they still have the board that covers that entry level paddleboarding. They still have 32 wide boards, they still have 10 sixes, 10 foots, which are your golden lengths and widths. But they also offer the 11 foots, which are slightly longer, give you a bit more glide, and they make them a little bit wider widths as well, 33, and you can also get them at 31. Uh, basics around boards, the longer you go with a paddleboard, the more glide or the more speed you're going to have per paddle stroke you put in and the wider in the width you go in a paddle board the more stable you will get so obviously a board at 33 wide will be more stable than a board at 32 inches wide but the downside to it is it does slow you down so if you're going to be paddling a little bit further longer distances or you're a bit more comfortable with your paddle boards sticking to a board that's a little bit narrower will be easier to paddle longer distances hence why you do see a lot of paddle boards that are a lot longer maybe 14 foot in length and they are a lot thinner they're generally more race based paddle boards designed to paddle in a straight line as fast as possible the length of the paddle boards does make it easier to paddle in a straight line as well so you'll find the longer base boards will have more straight line tracking and the shorter base boards the 10 foot boards will be easier to turn around and also if you're getting into sub surfing that's the sort of thing you might be looking at having a shorter base board opposed to a longer 11 foot or 12 foot 6 length of board 
And now looking back at the Blackfin range, you can see it's a little bit bigger again than the other two ranges of boards. They do have that sort of entry level board that you could get into paddleboarding, but they are all a little bit wider. The 10.6, for instance, is 35 inches wide. And the 11.6 is 34 wide and the 12.6 is still 32 wide. So they are all a little bit wider. But you're going to see that sup fishing, touring, people that want to put a lot of weight on their paddle boards, the black fins are the range of boards that you are going to get the most stiffness and also having the most amount of cargo capacity and the amount of weight these boards can take. You, so you could even say that the black fin range is a little bit more of a specialist range of paddle boards. If you're into sup fishing, you're going to want the black fin range because it's got that extra stability. It's got so many more features and fittings which we'll speak about in a minute. So now let's talk about what goes in and onto the boards to make them the different price points. First off, let's have a look at the constructions. All these three boards have an internal core of drop stitch, which 99% of all paddle boards on the market are made of drop stitch. The outer layer on the nautical is a double layer construction, PVC construction, which is where they have two layers of PVC, so it makes it very hard wearing. Some of the most cheapest ISUPs on the market are still single layer PVC, so if you do scratch or rip through that single layer, you will end up puncturing your board and you will have to repair it. The best way to increase the durability of your ice up is put another layer of PVC around it, which is why the black fin and the eye rocker, the more expensive boards, are triple layer. So they are an extra layer of PVC over the cheaper nautical base board. The only thing the black fin has got opposed to the cheaper, more moderately priced eye rocker, it has a carbon band down the side of the rail, which gives the board much more stiffness. Now, stiffness is something that's a big part to play when you're buying an inflatable paddle board. If you go and buy a very cheap inflatable paddleboard from your local supermarket that's only a couple hundred bucks, it will feel a bit like a banana when you're paddling it or a lilo. It's not a very good experience, you will not enjoy it and guaranteed you will sell that board pretty quick and you will be buying into a more established known brand like iRocker for sure. We've heard it hundreds of times before, you do buy cheap and ice ups, generally you will get a very cheap product. And stiffness is so important when it comes to inflatable paddle boards that we put all of our paddle boards that we've ever tested or reviewed through a deflection test, which is where we put it on a gap of 1.5 meters apart, and then we put a weight of 75 kilograms right in the center where you'd be standing, and then we measure how much the board drops or deflects. Some of the stiffest boards on the market, the most expensive boards that we've ever tested, have dropped to seven millimeters, and the cheaper sort of based inflatable paddle boards that you'll find in your supermarket drop to around 26, 27 millimeters. So there's quite a big difference there in the range. All these boards take the same recommended PSI pressure of 14 to 18 PSI. The more air you put in your paddle board, the stiffer the board will be. No matter what paddle board, what brand it is, from anywhere around the world, that is pretty much how it works. We did these tests all at 15 PSI and 18 PSI. If we look at the nautical board first, that dropped 20 millimeters when it was pumped up to 15 PSI and it dropped 19 millimeters when it was pumped up to 18 PSI. So you can clearly see there how much stiffer the board is. If we're looking at the iRocker board, when that's pumped up to 15 PSI, it dropped 14 millimeters. And when we dropped, pumped it up to 18 PSI, it dropped to 13 millimeters. So you can clearly see the jump with the eye rocker there, the extra layer of PVC wrapping around the board gives that board much more stiffness. It makes it a lot stiffer and you are gonna feel that when you're paddling on the water, especially if you're a heavier paddler or you're carrying more weight on your paddleboard in general. The black fin, remember it's got the carbon rail down the side, so it should be the stiffest board, and it is the stiffest board. It only dropped 13 millimeters at 15 PSI and 12 millimeters at 18 PSI. It's not a massive jump up from the eye rocker, but you can see the carbon rail band down the side does give that board the extra stiffness. And again, if you're that heavier paddler or you're paddling with a lot of weight or you really want the performance out of your paddle board, stiffness is gonna make a bigger difference. If you're generally paddling for the first time and just playing around with the family, just a light bit of all-round paddle boarding, having a board that flexes a little bit is okay. So the nautical will suit most of the paddlers. But again, the performance upgrade, the eye rocker and the black fin gives you that stiffer board, you're gonna be able to paddle further for less effort. But the downside to having extra materials on a paddle board is the weight of the paddle boards. If we look at the weights of these three average boards that we did our deflection test with, the Nautical has a weight of 9.43 kilograms or 20.78 pounds. 
The slightly more expensive iRocker, remember this is now a triple layer board, had a weight of 11.51 kilograms, 25.38 pounds. So it jumps up quite a bit there. And the triple layer with carbon rails, this is the Blackfin, has a weight of 12.11 kilograms or 26.70 pounds. So you can see the weight jump up there, the extra materials and also the extra features that are on the board do increase that weight. So if you are carrying your boards long distances, maybe you're having to walk in them a backpack or carry them further when they're inflated, having a lighter board is going to be easier to do that. Another really big standout to these packages, because all these boards come complete with packages, is the bags that they come with. Your more expensive boards, which are heavier as well, do come with much better, well padded bags, which is a good thing because obviously they weigh a little bit more, but then the weight is distributed better on your shoulders. You have much thicker padding on the bags. The back support is much nicer. The black fin boards all come with wheel bags. So if you're going on holiday in an airplane and you're rolling it for an airport, you've got a very nice bag to put your powder board. And to be honest, they're all big enough, the bags, even the ones with the nautical, to get a lot more in them than just the powder so you can go you could go for a weekender you could go away for a few days get on the plane and you could take all of your belongings probably if you pack pretty light in that paddleboard bag as well which we've done and it is a really fun thing to do just to get away and have a short break and paddle somewhere else the iRocker bag is very similar to the blackfin bag except it hasn't got the wheels it's still very well padded on the shoulders still lots of pockets still takes the board nice and easily so you're still getting a good bag with the iRocker board and then you have the nautical bag which is like the board a little bit more stripped back hasn't got extra pockets hasn't got an extra pocket for your pump externally it all fits in the one bag nice and easily, but it's definitely not as refined as the other two bags. But again, not everybody needs or wants that full on bag. Some people actually don't want bags with wheels because they like to roll them up nice and small and put them on the front of their paddleboard when they go paddleboarding or do their mini touring adventures. So having a small compactable bag like the one that comes with the nautical can be a real plus for a lot of people as well. So the iRocker and the Blackfin boards do way more, but the bags are more padded. So that actually does even that out if you've been walking long distances with your board in your bag. The other stuff to look at with the package, both the iRocker and the Blackfin come with a double chamber, triple action pump. It's gonna get the most amount of air in your board as quick as possible. And it's gonna be really easy to pump because you've got three settings that you can change to make sure you don't get too much fatigue in your arm. Really the best pump to get the most amount of air in your board as possible. But they will need it because they are all generally bigger base boards, especially the 12 sixes, they're longer boards, so you're gonna to need to get more pressure, more air in those boards in general. So it's good to see those bigger pumps with those packages. The nautical pump is definitely more basic compared to the other two, but to be honest, it's exactly the same pump that comes with a lot of other top end brands on the market. It's still a two way pump, so it pumps on the downstroke and on the upstroke. And when the pumping gets hard, you can't push or pull anymore on the upstroke can take the nozzle out the back and just pump on the one way so it still gets a large amount of air in the board not as much as the other two and it's still easy to get to the higher pressure the basic difference between the two pumps is it's just going to take a little bit longer to pump the board up with the nautical pump but then if that's not really a problem maybe you're only pumping it up every so often and you're leaving it on the roof of the car the board inflated then it's definitely not a worry now looking at the paddles that come with all the packages, well the blade shapes themselves and the constructions of the blades are all exactly the same, whether you're buying the Nautical, the iRocker or the Blackfin. Their graphics are slightly different, but the blades are exactly the same. They are a fairly basic blade. I wouldn't say there's lots of shape to them. They're not gonna give you a huge amount of performance, but they are very hard wearing. They're gonna handle the knocks. Definitely the kids can make sandcastles on the beach with them. So they're a sort of paddle that you probably will upgrade with time to get a better blade shape, but they are gonna last a long time being smashed around. The shafts themselves are very different though. Even the cheaper price point nautical still comes with a fiberglass shaft opposed to a lot of other brands that produce their cheaper price point boards all come with aluminium shafts. The downside to aluminium shafts is they do tend to bend and hold their shape after a while and they're quite heavy. So the nautical board coming with that three piece fiberglass paddle is actually a better quality paddle than a lot of the other inflatable brands out there. All the paddles are fully adjustable, three piece, so they break down nice and easy to go in your bag. Moving up from there, looking at the iRocker paddle, the, pad the only difference is that is a fiberglass carbon mix of paddle shaft. So it's gonna be a little bit lighter than the fiberglass one that's on the nautical, and it's gonna be a bit stiffer too. The stiffer your paddle, the more response you're gonna have when you're paddling. In effect, the faster you're gonna paddle for the less effort as well. 
Therefore, when you go to a full carbon paddle, which is what comes with the black fin boards, you get a full carbon shaft and therefore these are lighter and they are more responsive again, so giving you a better paddling experience. One thing that's the same on all the paddle boards, the nautical, the eye rocker and the black fin is the fin setup. They come with a three fin setup or a two plus one, which is where the center fin is bigger than the two side fins. It's called a flip lock system, so you slide the fin in and lock it back. It's becoming a very popular system with a lot of other ISUPs that we've tested over the last year, and it is a very easy system to use. You want to make sure there's not too much sand in the back of the fin, but when you've got a clean fin box, it goes in and gives the fin a nice secure fitting. The only difference is the iRocker one has got iRocker written on it, and the black fin one has got a black fin, and it's got black fin written on it. The nautical one doesn't come with anything written on it, but the construction and the fin shape is exactly the same. The nice thing about having those three fins, if you are surfing, you're going to get a lot more performance having the side fins out on the edge. And if you're touring or you want to do a bit more longer distance paddling, you could take the side fins out and just run it with a bigger center fin like this one. And that will bring the drag down on the board, still make it paddle in a straight line, but give you a bit more option to try and increase the speed of your board. So now let's go over the features and fittings you get on nautical, eye rocker and blackfin boards. Now straight away I'm going to say a big thumbs up from us that all of the boards come with a huge amount of cargo tie downs, handles at the front and the back, handles in the middle that are nicely well padded and in the right place and even the cheaper base nautical has all of that too but it hasn't got as much as the eye rocker and the blackfin. The easy way to think about it is the more money you spend right up to the blackfin, it's got so much more attachments. It's got so many more ram mounts or things you can attach and physically clip onto your board. For example, the eye rocker and the blackfin both have handles up either side of their bungee points here, which I imagine you could easily fit on the nautical, but it's really nice to see them at the back, at the sides, at the front. There's handles everywhere on both the eye rocker and the black fin. The basic difference between the black fin is you have got a lot more ram mounts. Ram mounts are where you can have a screw thread that's a standard screw thread. It can take fishing rod attachments, it can take water bottle holders, it can take GPS attachments, it can take everything. Ram mount makes so many different accessories you can screw in to this board. So just down this one side of the board you've got one, two, three, four, four ram mounts just on the side of the board. And also you've got an attachment here that takes a fishing pole. So if you are fishing in the flats, maybe you're fly fishing, bone fishing, you can put down this fishing pole to secure you and to keep you in the same place when you're fly fishing or lure fishing. If you don't know what that means, just it's about fishing and it's pretty cool if you're into fishing. iRocker do make a good range of accessories that you can clip onto these paddle boards from kayak seats, paddle holders, cool boxes. They make the lot that you can use. So if you're into touring, sup fishing, you really will probably find an accessory that's just right for what you're after. The actual look of the boards is quite special. Definitely the black fin ones do look pretty cool. When they've got a little bit of black in them, like this one here in the Model X, it does look very stylish. I do personally really love the orange eye rocker. That is a standout, good looking product. But of course, colors always are a personal choice. There is a lot of color ranges in the eye rocker and the black fin board. I wouldn't say that the manufacturing or the build finish is any different between the nautical or up to the black fin, they still look exactly the same. There's no glue marks with the nautical and obviously the black fin also looks perfect. The big difference really is, as I said, the features and the fittings. The deck pads are a lot more refined on the eye rocker and they're even more refined on the black fin. And they definitely do look like higher end boards in general because of the way they finished off those deck pads and those extra little features. So a little bit more information, warranties, the nautical comes with a one year warranty, the black fin and the eye rocker comes with two year warranties, environmental awareness, which is something that we're bringing into all our ISA videos at the moment. We're really trying to push brands into trying to package their boards in a more environmentally way. And if they can put more environmental products into their boards when they're making them. Unfortunately, this is where the downside to the eye rockers are for us. They all came wrapped in plastic, which is a real shame to see and no doubt by us highlighting it, hopefully they'll fix it into the future. So definitely that is one of the negatives to these boards. But apart from that, there isn't really any big standout negatives to any of these boards. Maybe the paddle for the black fin, the blade shape could be a little bit more refined, but it does still come with a 100% carbon shaft. The price points of these boards are really good. The nautical sitting at that very competitive range, cheaper price point in the market. 
definitely a better board than other equivalent boards in the market and your iRocker a nice good looking range of boards very eye catching a little bit more money but you can see where that money has gone in the features and the fittings the construction and the bag you get definitely the Blackfin is the best board but it's a little bit more specialist if you're into fishing it's going to be a great board if you're into touring and putting a lot of weight on your board it's also going to be a great board but for most people i feel that the eye rocker range and the nautical range is going to be the board that most people want to get on and definitely paddle for the first time I hope you found that overview video of the nautical eye rocker and blackfin range useful please give us a like if you found it useful thank you very much for watching if you want more information get onto supboardermag.com where we'll be speaking about these boards in general a bit more giving you sliders pictures extra information that you don't find on youtube thank you very much subscribe to our youtube channel if you're really getting into sup at the moment check out supboarder pro there's loads of extra content that you don't just see on youtube thank you very much and we'll see you next time on another supboarder video